All right, we're going to put this motor together here. So we uh, built this a while ago. It's a 2110. We took it apart just to clean it up because it sat around on the floor and got dirty. So we took it apart and cleaned everything. We're going to go ahead and assemble the short block today. And uh, I had a couple of people ask me about sealers and stuff. And this is the sealer that I've been using lately. This is the uh, Permatex Ultra Gray. It's good for high vibrations. And it says it's good for import late models. And it's safe for uh, sensors, which we don't have to worry about. But this works pretty well. And of course, the old reliable. I like to use this on the oil pumps. You know, I don't just use one sealer on the motor. This on uh, the oil pump is what I mainly use this for. And if I'm building a stocker, sometimes I'll use this on the case halves. But I found in the past this tends to get hard and a lot of heat. And it'll get brittle and then you'll have an oil leak where the silicone doesn't uh, fail quite as fast as this. And then as far as assembly lube, use the ultra slick permatex and then usually just motor oil we do have some uh, molly lube for the lifters and cam here that I use let me ask what I use on the camshafts this stuff works really well so uh, yeah I think we got everything here I need to get some oil Sydney oil camshaft over here. We already have our crank laying in here. The flywheel, we never took it off. Just pulled it out, cleaned everything. Checked everything. Of course, it's never run, so everything's really good. Uh, we'll check one more time on the bearing here. Use the bearing. I don't like to put this in the case till we confirm that it's flat here and doesn't rock. That lets us know that the crank's sitting in the uh, saddle's flat and all the dowel pins are lined up. Sometimes if you get the dowel pin off to the side of this hole, if you put this bearing here, it'll rock. If it ever rocks any at all, you wanna start over and make sure everything's seated properly. So now we're gonna go ahead and place this in case over here. Let's flip the clips that we already have them in there. Let's flip the clips. And put a little oil on this. Earl. Oh, that air condition is just blowing the oil everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Got some AC in here. Production company wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, that's <laughs> AC or they weren't coming over anymore. CT's production. Yeah, he was done with that, no AC stuff. It's high maintenance. I have to admit, it's pretty nice. We uh, notched these lifters, the oil hole there, you can see the oil hole, and we notched it to the second passes, because when you put a high lift cam, this hole gets out of register with the feed hole, and it can wipe the lifter bores out. So this helps give the lifter bores some stability and better lubrication trick I didn't come up with that it's old hot rod trick Volkswagen trick these are uh, CB performance lifters these are their camshaft in this motor it's a 2412 with the uh, one four Potter rockers it's right at 608 lift so it's pretty big we are using their uh, wedge port cylinder heads, which have the longer valves in them, which give you the extra travel for the uh, added lift. We've got a cam plug tied in here somewhere. Let's put that in before we forget that. A little silicone on this bad boy. Great. 
Uh, you can put the cam plug in either way, it really doesn't matter. I've gotten the habit of putting it in with this side facing towards the flywheel. That way if you ever have a bolt come through and hit the plug, if you have it this way it can rub a hole in the cam plug. If you run it this way you get a little uh, protection from anything like that happening. You run into this problem more on an automatic car. You know, when you're putting the torque converter bolts in, be a little bit of a problem. So, that's where that little trick came from. There's a little more. A little more. I don't want any oil leaks. sealer on the other case half since it's uh, over there we're gonna go ahead and put the camshaft in next it already has the gear bolted on we're gonna line the dots up I do believe I uh, highlighted these because I'm going blind so you want to reference your uh, dots I don't know if you can see that or not there's two dots on the uh, crankshaft and there will be one dot on the camshaft You want to put the one dot in between the two dots. You want to put a little leave on this uh, on these rippers real quick. Little we'll break in lube. Yeah, my webcam came with some. Yeah, it'll come with a little package of it. Yeah. This is the big tube of it. That's all it is. Uh, different cam companies, you know, they have little different versions of it. Comp cams is uh, red now. It's, it's high pressure lube. Believe it or not, back in the uh, old days, they used to put a little abrasive in the cam lube. And uh, it would help make the lifter to the uh, camshaft quicker. But as more people, novice, started building motors, they like to put it on the bearing surfaces and stuff, and it caused issues, so they don't put race up in the cam lift anymore. <laughs> and a little bit of lube on this side. A little curl on these. We did have to uh, clearance this case under the lifter. I'm going to go out and machine the lifter boss here and put a super high lift cam in there. Alright, a little molly lube on those. This stuff doesn't play good with oil. Try to put it on top of the well, it doesn't stick. Yeah, I want to make a little, uh, like a Spintron, a little motor that we can operate, just run the camshaft and lifters to break in the cam oh, without any cool. spring tension on them. Yeah. Um, that would, uh, come in handy for the motors with double valve springs like this one. Alright, I'm going to move this sump out of the way so I can push that motor down. These are the lifter clips that keep the uh, lifters from falling out when you put the two case halves together. You can, uh, buy these at your local Volkswagen parts house or you can make them out of coat hangers. You sort of need these if you're going to put a motor together though. Hold everything in place. I know some guys like to pack the lifter bore with grease. Hold them in place but that's probably not the best practice. Hand bearings a little lube here. Motor oil on the bearing surfaces. Okay. 
check your dots always. Make sure they're lined up. We lined up with little dots inside the dots. Yep. All right. Because I'm blind, you know. Looks good. Blah. Doing this blind, boys. Right, we'll put a little sealer on this half of the case. And the sealer works really good, but you gotta make sure that you don't have any oil on your surfaces is the key. And you don't need a whole lot. I tend to try to put it on this side so it doesn't squeeze into the case. If it squeezes out here a little bit, you're all right. But you don't want silicone squeezing on the inside of the case. So. So in the high performance engines you use silicone? I pretty much use this on all the motors now. I mean if I'm doing a, a bone stock motor sometimes I'll use the uh, RBT or the uh, old Indian head sealer, aircraft sealer, whatever you want to call it. You got the Swiss cheese, these Volkswagen motors. <laughs> Get the bigger cranks in them. So did you do some work on this case? No, this case, uh, I mean, I had to align the oil holes on the aluminum cases. It's pretty critical that you check the alignment of the uh, bearing to oil hole. But these cases come clearanced for an 86 stroke and bored for whatever, you know, you want to get it bored for. They're solid behind number three over here. So they're, it's a pretty nice case. I like the magnesium cases personally, but the aluminum case, it's not a bad deal. Because it comes pretty much, you know, with all the machine work where you can put a motor together. You can buy a mag case the same way, but they're expensive, you know, they get up in the $1,200, $1,300 range. Yeah. 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 If you're building a stroker motor, though, these aluminum cases are pretty much what you want, you know, when you're doing it at your house. You get them ready to go. I think A&A &A has them and kits and uh, CB sells some kits, but they're available from a couple of different people. split bearing in the front of this. Normally there's a uh, circle bearing there. The uh, split bearing is 
much more robust than the uh, standard circle bearing that usually goes behind the timing gear there. On the performance motors, I usually buy two main bearing sets and put the split bearing in the front also, or the rear, which is actually the front of the motor. All right, we're ready to put this together. Let's, uh, let's look on that cam thing there. I think so. Squeeze these rods together, like so. And I'll hold it down here. Don't worry about this one. Just have to move it here. Yep. To the case hardware on these uh, six main bolts they're going to be a washer underneath the bolt the washer will be rounded on one side and flat on one side you want to put the flat side down towards the case I like to put a little silicone on the bottom of the washer like so if any oil tries to crawl out through the threads the silicone usually catches it and then we'll use a sealing nut also. We're going to torque these down to 27 foot pounds. You can find your uh, torques online or in the out without guesswork uh, manuals from Volkswagen. They're online also. Good uh, resource for torque specs. The Samba. But here it's 27 on the mains and 18 on the outers. So that's how we do it here. Uh, we still have an uh, old torque wrench here. I think we need a digital one, so everybody keeps telling me. Yeah, a little easier to read. Digital. Yeah, then I'm going blind. Yeah, it might be easier, right? Twenty. Sure. 
usually leave these out in the front until I put the oil pump in. We're gonna find the oil pump for this motor. Want a little sealer on these two. They go down to the camshaft, or the two uh, rear camshaft journals, studs. So I put a little, uh, little silicone on these so it can't seep past the stud. Just want to get it around the stud really good there. I'm going to put the washer on it. Good to go. What kind of carbs are you going to put on this? Uh, 48s, IDAs. They're over there on the bottom shelf. Nice. CNC ported manifolds, CNC ported heads. Should run pretty good. It's not an everyday, you know, motor, but it's like a weekend street strip type deal. Uh, change the camshaft and the carburetors and cylinder heads and make it a you know whatever you wanted it. We're going for some fun now. Want some fun with this one? Maybe if you buy too many cars, I can buy that Carmen Ghia from you. Yeah. You want a Carmen Ghia? Yeah. Still waiting for my Carmen Gia to show up. I traded for my mill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you got a good deal. Yeah. So these are only 18. Yeah, 18 foot pounds on the small hardware. And that varies based on the engine you're working on. No, it's always 18 on the 13 millimeter ones. Okay. And uh, 27 on the case nuts. Yeah. That won't vary. It's all the same from the 40 horse to, uh, you know, whatever you're building. Some guys like to increase the torque on these a little bit. I don't like to do that. The other trick they'll do is they'll put the uh, 15 millimeter head stud bolt nut there. So you get a little more tor torque surface. Instead of using the uh, 13 millimeter, you can put a 15 millimeter here, outside diameter. But uh, I don't think the hardware will be the failure point on this motor. This is one of those, uh, it's a race motor, you know, you just go for the best. Got our shore block together there, we're all torqued up. And uh, next we'll put our piston cylinders on there and bolt our sump up. And uh, we'll get this one put in the car, or maybe go to the track or something, have a track night. It's gonna have to cool off for a service. It's too hot to do anything lately. Yeah. But anyway, that's where we're at. It's a 2110 little uh, weekend warrior motor. If anybody's interested in this motor, leave a comment. If you want something similar to this, we can build it for you. However you want it. This one here is a little snotty. Because these are the cylinder heads we're going to be using. Put these on in the next video. It's our CV Performance uh, wedge port heads. We have a set of Potter rockers, Manton push rods. And these are uh, 46 by 37.5. We have the CNC chambers. We're going to run the uh, copper head gaskets on this one. This thing should run really good. It looks cool anyway, right? Yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah, so that's where we're at. Need to get some better valve covers for it and stuff like that. That was the, 
you know, I didn't have the money for the uh, MST valve covers. That's what it needs. The MST treatment there. Pulley, alternator stand. That's a nice setup. We'll get it running. I guess that's the next one to start is the uh, Mexican Beetle motor. Maybe we'll do that next time we come over. I'll get some oil on that and we'll get it fired up and see what it runs like. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd like got to hear the, it. Got the pans welded in the car. Just do a little rear suspension work on that and we can start pulling that thing together. Get it out of here so we can do some more projects. Yeah. It's a sweet looking motor. Yep. I'm going to try to get this out of here and try to set the shop up more for engine builds. That's coming up. But, uh, we're going to finish this motor up. We'll do probably one or two more videos on this. And then we have a 1600 we're going to put together. That'll be for sale. A used 1600. You know, we're not going to use, we're going to use new bearings and stuff, and it'll be mostly used parts, reconditioned. So, I used to build a lot of those motors because that's what a lot of people build. You know, they take their motors apart, use the parts they have, put bearings in it. So that would be a nice build to follow along on. It would be a 1600. A lot of people build those. So that will be coming up. And then we have a Type 4 build coming up. If I can uh, get the heads finished. <coughs> so that's coming up. And I'm trying to find some uh, valve guides for Type 4. Any of you guys have any clues to where to get valve guides, uh, leave a link in the bottom there. Leave a little comment, you know, you know where to get some valve guides. By the bulk. By the whatever, uh, we need nine millimeter stem size on the exhaust, eight millimeter on the intake, and they're type four. Having a hard time finding a service guide, so I know you guys know all the suppliers and stuff. So. It's looking good. Well, there we go, man. It's all cleaned up. It'll look pretty good. We'll get it all together, and uh, this one's full flow. So it's uh, got all the little tricks on it you can get. So I'm going to put a full flow pump on there. Got a bird cover for it, for the uh, oil pump cover. Nice. Yeah, it's all the gears and stuff here, but the pump's not here. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> you find the pump. You got to find the pump. Better than rust, right? Some bird. Full floor cover. Nice. Got my new welder in from uh, Jags. This thing here is the best $325 I've ever spent in my life, I think. It's a 180 220 unit, and uh, I just can't believe how good it welds. So I've had the old snap on welder for a while over there. When we had to retire it, it just got tired. And uh, I think that's probably about 30 years old, maybe a little older. It's a little 140, 110 unit, which was super expensive back in the day, but everything's smaller now. And it comes in little packages from the new technology, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's even got a decent lead on it. The only thing, the only complaint was the ground, which I told you was pretty short. But I have extra ground cable off the old machine, so. But it worked really well. Came with a little stick welder unit. And you used it to weld in the floors? Yeah, weld the floors in an uh, officer's car here. Get these done. Got to get back on this. Got to put some uh, new main brake line in there and uh, rebuild the pedal assembly. Bought a roller pedal to put on it. And uh, yeah, start putting this back together. Get the interior back in here. I got to take both doors apart, replace the window regulators, and, uh, stuff like that. But floors came out really nice. Fit pretty decent. I had to trim them. Yeah, that, we went over that, I think. But uh, once we trimmed them up, got them in there, everything uh, came out pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, it looks good. Went ahead and epoxy primered the uh, tunnel and the pans and uh, put some base clear over them, black, just so they'd have some uh, protection to the elements, you know, under the carpet. A lot of times, if you leave the factory, uh, E code on the pans, they don't, you know, they'll rust. So we'll do some uh, 
undercoating underneath it, get it jacked up and do the bottom of the pans so they're uh, protected underneath. And uh, that's about it. Looks good.